أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يقنت منكن لله ورسوله وتعمل صالحا نؤتها أجرها نؤتها أجرها مرتين وأعتدنا لها رزقا كريما يا نساء النبي لستنك أحد من النساء إن اتقيتن فلا تخضعن بالقول فيطمع الذي في قلبه فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض وقل قولا معروفا صدق الله العظيم in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you, my brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah and we thank Allah for everything that He has given us and uh, especially for this wonderful weather that Allah has bestowed upon all of us. We ask Allah that the way this weather is very, uh, is bringing the comfort and peace for us we ask Allah, Ya Rabbul Alameen, bring the comfort and peace for all of us in the life of the hereafter as well, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ard. And I hope that you are enjoying this weather. Uh, you know, I always like to do the live streaming outdoor, uh, you know, yeah, trees at the background or greenery, something like that. But I can't do it outside because it's, it's drizzling outside. So, so I'm just doing it from the room. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every one of us. So, 22nd Juz of the Holy Quran. Today is the 22nd uh, uh, fast uh, of the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. And uh, what 22nd Jews of the Holy Quran talks and mentions and uh, gives us the lessons. Uh, basically, 22nd, when you will begin the 22nd Jews of the Holy Quran, you will realize that Surah Al-Ahzab continues. Uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the 30th, uh, 33rd uh, chapter of the Holy Quran. Chapter 33 uh, and uh, Surah Al-Ahzab has 73 verses and then you will also find in Sam Jews 34th chapter of the Holy Quran which is the uh, Surah Al-Sabah which has 54 verses and as well as Surah Al-Fatir which is the 35th chapter of the Holy Quran which has 45 verses and as well as Sur Sur Surah Al-Yasin which is the 36th chapter of the Holy Quran which has 83 verses. All these beautiful chapters actually you will find in this beautiful Jews, which is a sec 22nd Jews of the Holy Quran, 22nd part of the Holy Quran. Now, <clears throat> in this Jews, Allah, once again, in the first paragraph, Allah talks about believing men and the believing woman. You know, I don't know if you noticed or not that in a each Jews, in every Jews that we have, uh, you know, learned few things, in each Jews, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believing men and the believing woman. Allah talks about their characteristics, Allah talks about their attributes and at the same time Allah talks about that what He has planned for those believing men and the believing women. So you will find this throughout the Holy Quran in each Jews, in every single, uh, you know, Jews of the Holy Quran, in every single part of the Holy Quran. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks once again about the Muslimin, Muslimat, all the believing men, all the believing women and especially Allah talks about Qanitina wal Qanitat those who have the khushu, those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the men and from the women and as well as those who are truthful, all the uh, truthful men and all the truthful women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about them and uh, there is a hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to saying the truth, when it comes to always, uh, you know, supporting the truth, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that alaykum bi sidq fa inna siddqa yahdi ilal birr that you have to be truthful because for truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise and be aware of lying nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wa fa and be aware of lying because lying leads to immorality uh, and immorality leads to the hellfire and nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam then mentions that um, subhanallah that a man will keep telling the truth 
a man will keep telling the truth and striving to do until he will be recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as sadiq, as the truthful servant. Subhanallah, what an honor that if we return in the presence of Allah as a, as a truthful servant. And then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that and the next person, he will be keep telling lies and he will persist in doing so until he will be recorded with Allah as a kazab, as a liar. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from being uh, to, 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 to lie with the people and to deceive with the people and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to engage our tongue in always in truthfulness always in siddiq because we want to be written in the presence of Allah as a, as a truthful servant not as a liar not as a liar so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, was sadiqina was sadiqat about the, 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 the men and the women those who, those who give the sadaqa those who give the charity and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was sadaqatu tatfiyul khatiyatu kama yutfiyul ma'un nar aw kama kala alayhi wa sallam that listen this huh? fasting extinguishes bad deeds just as water extinguishes fire Allahu Akbar the way the water you know removes or extinguishes the fire in the same way this uh, this sadaqa sorry this sadaqa this this charity this zakat this helping the poor and the needy you know removes your bad actions el el eliminate your bad actions and uh, you know purify your sins actually subhanallah so give the sadaqa even if it is one dollar my brother and sisters and then Allah appreciates the people those who ha have, have the patience all the men and the women those who are the patient one and then Allah subhanahu wa talks about <laughs> Wal khashi'ina wal khashi'at, those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal mutasaddiqina wal mutasaddiqat, wal sa'imina wal sa'imat, those who, those men and the women, those who keep the fast for the sake of Allah. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that was sawmu zakatul badan, it is mentioned actually, it is a narration, that fasting, fasting is the zakat of the body. Fasting is the zakat of the body. What does it mean? You know the, what is the meaning of zakat? Zakat, what is the meaning of zakat? Zakat means to purify. Zakat mean uh, to, 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 to purify your soul, your, you know, uh, so when we give the zakat, actually that, that money is purifying our remaining money. When we give 2.5 every year, that 2.5 purifies the remaining wealth that we have or the remaining richness or the remaining uh, business, whatever we have, that 2.5 purifies it. Subhanallah. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same way he says that fasting is also a means of the purification of our body, our, our soul, our actions, our every single thing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about wal hafiz in a furujan wal hafizad, all the men and the women, those who protect their private parts, Allah appreciates them. And then Allah talks about Wadakirina Allah Kathiran Wadakirat, all the men and the believing men and the believing women, those who engage in the remembrance of Allah in abundance, in much a zikr of Allah in much remembrance of Allah, Allah appreciates them and uh, there is a hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu in which he says that إِذَا أَيْقَضَ الرَّجُلُ إِمْرَأَتُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَصَلَّيْنَا رَكَعَتَيْنَا كَتَبْنَا تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةَ مِنَ الزَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَذَاكِرَاتٍ Oh, Kama Qarali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that beautiful hadith, huh? and this is the time to implement this hadith my brother, especially tonight. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said that if a man wakes his wife at night and they pray together, they pray together two rakat. They will record it that night as being among the men and the women who remember Allah much, who remember Allah in abundance. Subhanallah. So you can do this tonight, inshallah. Wake up your wife or your, your, your husband, inshallah. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us, uh, to, uh, you know, to contribute uh, uh, to getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one another, inshallah, Aziz. And then afterwards, after mentioning all these qualities of the believing men and the believing women, subhanAllah, Allah mentions two things. Allah is talking about the two great news. Allah is giving us two glad tidings. SubhanAllah, what are those? Are you ready for these, my brothers and sisters? So listen this. Allah says, Allahu lahum maghfira wa ajran azima. That those who have these qualities, you know, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness. Subhanallah. Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and the second Allah has prepared Allah has prepared for them a great reward. And what is a great reward? Great reward is the paradise. Great reward is looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment in the paradise. Subhanallah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among these uh, kind of the people. Ameen. Ya Rabbul Alameen. And afterwards Allah talks about in the same Jews, Surah Al-Ahzab verse 40. Verse 40, chapter 33, Allah talks about the finality of prophethood, one of my favorite topic. 
and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is mentioned uh, Allah talks about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Ma kana Muhammadun aba hadim rijalikum, walakin Rasool Allah wa khatam al Nabijin wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. I think I believe this is the verse that you need to memorize, my brother and my sister. This is the verse that your children need to memorize. Instill the the this verse or the concept and the idea of this verse and the belief of this verse in the mind and in the heart of your children, please. Chapter 33, verse 40, Allah says that Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the last of all prophets, and it is also mentioned he is the khatim, he is the seal of all prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah is ever all aware of everything. Allahu Akbar. And I just want to quote few hadiths concerning to the finality of Prophet Hum, Prophethood, finality of Messengerhood of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imam Ahmad recorded a narration from Ubay ibn Kaab radiyallahu taala anhu that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said very interesting hadith. Uh, look how beautifully he gave the example to make us the to make us understand. He says that Masali fin Nabijini ka Masali Rajulin bana daran fa ahsanaha wa akmalaha. That my parable among the prophets is that of a man who built a house, who built a house and he and did a good and complete job. Subhanallah. And apart from the apart from the space of one brick which he did not put in its place, means that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam explains that my example. My parable among the prophets is like the person who builds a beautiful home, beautiful mansion, beautiful palace, and he puts everything in it except one brick. One brick is remaining from that, uh, you know, home. And when people passes by that home, they admires that home, they appreciates that home, they say good things about that home, and at the same time they say that wish if there was this this brick as well in the, in this in this uh, in this palace. And if the brick was there in this palace, this palace would have looked complete and more beautiful and more nice. And then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "For ana fil nabiji maudiyo tilka labina tiyau kama akala sattu wasallam." That among the prophets, I'm like that brick. Among the prophets, I'm like that brick. Subhanallah. So, and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam also mentioned. Imam Ahmad recorded this. Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated this hadith that in the risala ta wa nabuwa ta qadin kataat fala rasula baadi wala nabiya baadi. Nabi Kareem صلى الله عليه وسلم said that messengerhood and the prophethood have come to an end, and there will be no messenger and there will be no prophet after me. Straightforward hadith of Nabi Kareem صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Imam Ahmad also mentioned narrated by Abu Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه beautiful hadith. Nabi Kareem صلى الله عليه وسلم says. That uh, fudilat ala al anbiya ala al anbiya sitta. That I have been given preference over the other prophets in six ways. I have been given preference over the other prophets, other over the other prophets in six ways. First, a o ti tu jawami al kalim. That I have been I have been given the ability to speak concisely, to speak in a very comprehensive way. Subhanallah. Means that Nabi Karim صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say one sentence, one phrase. But that used to, you know, deal with the entire topic. Rahim, don't close the door, please. He, that used to deal with the entire topic. Like, for example, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Innamal a'malu bin niyat." That uh, actions based upon the intentions. And the scholar says this one hadith covers the one third of the Islam, one third of third of the religion of Islam. So this is one very simple and straightforward hadith. But this has all the beautiful meanings, all the explanation. So this was the miracle of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then the second thing which was given to him that I have been aided by fear. Means that in the hearts of the disbeliever, in the hearts of the disbelieving men and the believing women, Allah has placed or Allah has cast the uh, the fear uh, for me. You know, Allah has cast into the hearts of the, of my enemies. And the third is that the spoils of war have been made permissible for me. Allahu Akbar. And the fourth, the entire earth has been made a masjid. And a means of purification for me. And fifth, that I have been sent to all of mankind. Omar sallallahu alaihi wasallam rahmatul alamin. That Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam is sent as a mercy for the whole mankind. And then the sixth one, Subhanallah, that that uh, the, and the prophets end with me, and the prophets and the messengers end with me. This is something that you know mentioned by Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I just want to end this discussion on this beautiful saying of Azad Imam Azam. Uh, Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi in which he says actually what happened what you know Imam Azam Abu Hanifa he's our Imam and we are the follower of Hanafi uh, school of thought once a man came in the in the presence of uh, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa and you know he he was claiming that he is the prophet he is the messenger so he was telling to Imam Azam that okay sit with me and i will explain you that 
why I'm saying that I'm the Prophet, why I'm claiming that I'm the Prophet. So Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, he mentions that that uh, he, he says something very interesting and he says that who anyone, anyone who asks of this man the cred credentials of the prophethood, he or she will become an apostate because Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explicitly he mentioned, he explicitly declared that La Nabi Abadi, there is no prophet after me. There will be no any messenger after me, no prophet after me whatsoever. No matter person is, is a pious or the righteous or whatever he is, he can, he can be anything and everything, but he can never be the prophet. And this is what, even if, if somebody is telling you, okay, you know, let me, let me sit with you, give me the permission to sit with you so that I can explain that, you know, I have the, uh, I have the, uh, I have some signs to prove that, okay, I'm the prophet. Even if you are listening his signs, that will take you out of the Islam. Because you know that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he himself mentioned that there is no prophet after me. And you know, this is something that need to be mentioned because, you know, recently a person came to me a year ago, two years ago, and he's saying, you know, Mulana, you know, I think about this person, he's a very righteous person. And I, don't, I will not mention his name. He was talking about somebody. And he's saying that, you know, this scholar, this Imam, I think that he is the prophet of God. Nauz Billah, I think that he is the messenger of God. And subhanAllah, I was thinking that, you know, people, sometimes we don't have even this basic and this important knowledge. So this is something that very important to, to, to teach our children. And I believe this is not the, the you know, the, the fault of uh, the, those common people. As an Imam, as a Mulana, as a, as a missionary of Islam, this is our responsibility to educate people, to inform people that what, what, what Islam says about the finality of prophethood, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about these things. So it is our responsibility. So that is why. So it's very important, my brother, teach your children, teach your children that, you know, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final of all prophets, is the last of all prophets. There is no any prophet after him. Yes, this is my one of my favorite topic. And uh, I'm talking about this on a continuous basis. And if you want to learn more, inshallah, just type my name on the on the YouTube, uh, say finality of prophethood, write finality of prophethood and then write by uh, Mulana Atif Majid. And you will see I, gave, I have given the entire lecture in a, in a very detail and I have mentioned every single thing with references. Yes. So make sure that we, our Iman, our faith is very good concerning to the uh, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because if you want him to intercede us on the day of judgment, so we have to believe on him the way he asks us to believe on him. Yes. And afterwards, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala talks about in verse 41, Ya ayhu ladhina amunu izkurullah zikran kasira that all you believers remember Allah in abundance. And uh, just want to mention one hadith of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once uh, two Bedouins came in the, in, the, in, the, in, the in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, and they said to Ya Rasulullah, the, which of the people is the best? Which of the people is best? And he said, Man ta'ala umrahu wa, wa hasuna amalihi. The one whose life is long and whose deeds are good. The one whose life is long and at the same time whose deeds are good as well. That is the best person. So you see, so this will give us the mindset. This will give us the uh, uh, method to make the dua. And that is that Ya Allah grant us long life with iman, with good actions, with good deeds. Don't always say that Ya Allah grant us long life and this and that. But you're not asking Allah to, for the good actions and the good deeds. And then he asked Ya Rasulullah, please advise me something. And then uh, teach me something that I can adhere to, that I can cling with, which will be very easy for me. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu says, La yazalu lisanu ka ratba min zikrillahi ta'ala. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And afterwards, in verse 56, Allah talks about, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah talks about sending salutations upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I just want to mention one hadith concerning to that. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, once uh, in the morning, the messenger of Allah, he was in cheerful mood. And he was looking, was he was very happy. And uh, so the Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, today you're looking very happy. What is the reason behind it? You are smiling and subhanAllah, there is a joy, there is a happiness, there is a comfort, there is a peace on your face. So please tell us. And then he mentioned that subhanAllah, of course, just now an angel came to me from my Lord. And he said to me that my Lord says that whoever among your ummah, whoever among the ummah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sends salahs upon you, sends salutations upon Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will record for him 10 good deeds. One salah, one, one salutation you are sending, but Allah will write 10 good deeds for you. And the second, Allah will, Allah will erase for him 10 bad deeds. And the third is, Allah will raise his status by 10 degree in this dunya and as well as in the life of the hereafter. And subhanAllah, Allah will return his greetings with something similar to it. 
if you will send salutations upon Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you will send greetings on Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in response of this, Allah will send greetings upon you, my brother. Allah will send greetings upon me. So we say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mulana Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Mulana Muhammad in Barik Wasallam. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned, a dua mawqufun bayna samai wal ard, a supplications remains suspended between heavens and the earth and does not ascend any further until a person sends salah on me. So do not treat me like a spare water container. Send salah upon me at the beginning of your supplication, at the end of your supplication, and as well as in the middle of your supplication. So this is something teaching us how to make the dua. So begin your dua with the supplication, end your dua with the uh, salutation, and in the middle send salutations upon Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. And then Allah talks about um, uh, that Allah is the one who distributes the risk in uh, verse 34, uh, chapter 34, verse 36 in uh, Rabbi Yabsudur Rizq Aliman Yasha and Allah is the one who gives the sustenance and all those things uh, mentioned and uh, so that's it, this is what the time we have so inshallah Allah Aziz we're going to make the dua now so we still have uh, I believe uh, three minutes so please raise your hands and make the special dua now Amin Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa la aqibatul al-muttaqeen wa salatu wa salam wa la sayyid al-anbiya ibal musaleen Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa barik wa sallim ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رب العالمين يا الله forgive our minor and major sins يا رب السماوات والأرض يا الله accept our fasting يا الله accept our صدقة زكاة حج يا الله يا الله accept our صلاة التراوي يا رب السماوات والأرض grant us the barakat grant us the anwar the jalliyat the lights of the month of Ramadan the blessings of the month of Ramadan Ya Rabbul Alameen, forgive our minor and major sins. Ya Allah, grant our, 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 our loved ones, Ya Allah, Jannah al firdos Ya Rabbul Alameen, elevate their status in the life of the hereafter, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Forgive their minor and major sins, Ya Rabbul Samawati wal Ard. Please make the dua in your heart. Ya Allah, I'm sorry. Ya Rabbul Alameen, remove our sicknesses, Ya Allah. Grant us shifa, grant us healing, Ya Allah. Remove our difficulties, our problems, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wa Grant all of us long life with Iman, with faith, with good action, with good deeds, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Instill in our mind, in our heart, the love of your Habib and the, the love of your, the love of yours, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wa And the love of the Holy Quran, Ya Allah. وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه ونور عرشه وزينة فرشه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين إن شاء الله. so tonight is is the next odd night third second odd night so make sure that you 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 treat this night as ليلة القدر as the night of power my brother and my sisters offer the salatul tasbih recite the Quran after the salatul taraweeh take a little bit nap take a little rest and afterwards you know around 12 a.m. 1 a.m. once again offer the salatul tahajjud إن شاء الله make sure that you maximize this night by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala and remember uh, when I will be live for the Surat Al-Mulk uh, you're going to mention first five verses of uh, Surat Al-Mulk inshallah as I mentioned yesterday you're going to give me the brief summary of the first five verses of Surat Al-Mulk not me you inshallah you're going to mention it in the comment section even if it is one line that you are understanding or deriving from the first five verses of Surat Al-Mulk I will appreciate inshallah because I also want to learn from you and at the same time others will benefit as well so inshallah this is the time to break the fast say this dua after me Allahumma inni laka sumtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ala rizqika aftartu Bismillah go ahead break your fast inshallah and uh, and don't forget to share this live streaming with others inshallah Aziz. assalamu alaikum jazakallah take care jazakallah for your feedback may Allah reward all of you may Allah bless each and every one of you ameen ya